Hey guys, welcome back to the cabin. Today I'm out doing a little bit of mushroom foraging and I wanted to show you what I'm up to. Stay tuned. So I've got my little backpack with me here. It's got all my gear in it. So I'm carrying with me an Openel number no. eight mushrooming knife. Got it kind of tethered to my pants here so it doesn't fall in my pocket. So it's got boar hair bristles at one end and the really sharp mushrooming knife at the other end. It also has a little bit of a ridge here so you can sort of scrape off the mushroom caps, I believe. Also has a really nice lock mechanism on it as well, so you can kind of rotate it like that so the blade locks in place. So this is really cool. I'm going to break this knife in today, hopefully, and hopefully get some chanterelles. So this is my compromise between wearing pants in the woods is wearing my shorts and my gaiters. So for all of you that make fun of me <laughs> wearing shorts in the woods and worry about my bug bites, swamp donkey. I basically get way too hot with pants in the woods, so anyway, this works. The gators help so the poison ivy doesn't get on my legs, and I have a little bit of a vent at my knee. So here's a flush of chanterelles. So they're looking a bit old, so I uh, won't be eating these guys, and they're kind of chewed up by the local grubs. You can see all the holes in them there. They have a very strong smell of apricot, so I won't be eating this one. But you'll note that I've cut the stem here with my knife, my little mushrooming knife there. So chanterelles have a mycorrhizal relationship with the roots beneath them. So in this case, it's a spruce. And so they basically get some sugars and nutrition from the tree. How cool is that? So as I'm harvesting the chanterelles, basically I'm using a little basket here that has open sides so that when you walk through the woods that you can uh, spread the spores as you move along. So there's some little guys just starting to come up. So I'm going to leave these go for a little while longer until they get to be a good size. So walking in the woods, came across this mushroom here and I sort of cut it there to take a better look at it. You can see something's been eating it. And when you flip it over, it's really different. It's got all these pores on the bottom of it. See that? Very different from the gills or even the ridges I've shown you um, when we've been looking at the other mushrooms. So I wanted to determine what this was. So because there are pores at the bottom, I knew it was in the uh, Boletus family, which is the Bolet mushroom. So basically I've got my mushrooming book with me and you can see here, it's the North American Mushrooms Field Guide to Edible and Inedible Fungi. It's a really good book. So if you open it up to a key to the Boletus and its relatives, so I'm gonna go through this key here and we'll go through and identify it. So basically it asks me, you know, are the pores, what color are they? So basically we can determine the pores themselves are yellow. So it tells me to go to seven in the key. So the pileus, which is the cap, it asks me if it's covered um, with scales or is it shaggy? No, it's not. When you look at the cap, it's actually quite smooth. Well, except for the critters that have been eating it. So we go through the pileus not as above, go to nine. So nine, does the flesh stain blue slowly or instantly when cut or handled? Now, just prior to filming this, I cut a little piece off of it. And as you can see, it did not turn blue. So basically um, it didn't do that. So I go to number 10. So down to number 10, it asked me if the stipe or the stem has little waves in it or just the apex or does it not have articulations or does it have articulations in the upper half or completely to the base? So if we look at it closely, you can see that there are these little reticulations or sort of ridges all along the stem. That means we go to number 13. 13, it asked me if the stem or the stipe is tall and thin, has deep ridges in it, and is the cap really small? No, that's not the case. The cap here is quite large. So it says the stipe, the stem is reticulate, not tall and thin, pileus not small in relation to the stipe, found in Eastern and Western North America. And because I'm in Eastern North America, this is true, so I go to 16. 16 asks me, is the cap or the pileus dry, orange yellow to smoky gray, and the stipe or the stem bright orange yellow with raised elongated reticulations? And definitely, if you look at the cap, for sure, it's sort of an orangey yellow kind of color to even yellow brown. So this looks like it's the end of the key for us. It's called Boletus ornotypi. So let's go make sure that that's what I actually have. Hey, lo and behold, there it is. Boletus ornotypes. So basically, um, it says here that it's inedible. So it basically explains all about it right here. It tells me the spore print is olive brown. So I may want to bring it back to the cabin and do a spore print just for funsies. 
So very cool. That's how you use a key to identify a mushroom in the woods that you haven't found before. Now I know some basics about mushrooming and so I knew it was in the Belit family. So that's why I could actually go and use this book. Um, some people may be a little bit challenging if you don't know some of the major groups of mushrooms as to where to start. But it comes with time. Just um, stay involved, read lots of books on mushrooming, um, hang out with an expert, and you'll learn all about mushrooms in no time. So here are some other cool mushrooms. These ones are actually earth star fungus. So they're kind of firm. And what will happen is these will burst open and look a bit like a flower. It's kind of early for them to pop now, but they're just up against this tree here. I'll have to revisit them a little later date. Kingdom fungi is very diverse. You can see here there's some dried up coral fungi all along the forest floor there. A couple weeks ago this was probably very interesting, but now it's kind of dried up. You come across this in the woods and you may think you found a very interesting looking fungus or mushroom and actually it's a flower. It's called Indian pipe. It is a plant that lacks chlorophyll and gets its nutrition from a relationship with the roots of trees. So it's really unique. It's white. It's sort of transparent actually in some areas and it comes up these little stalks out of the leaf litter. So there it is, Indian pipe. Hiking through the woods here in August. Look at that. It is a red, red maple leaf. How sad is that? Fall is coming. Oh well. Every season must come to an end. Just in a nice area of cedar here, but we're on the edge of a uh, stand of maples. So I'm gonna go look through the maples and see if we find any more mushrooms. Well, I had a great day out foraging for mushrooms and I just wanna show you another one that I found. My camera died in the woods. So <laughs> back at the cabin now and uh, I found these uh, mushrooms, Hydnum repandum. These are like a hedgehog mushroom. So these are edibles as well. So very cool, they've got these teeth like nubbins just underneath the cap there. So not like gills, but they look like teeth. Very cool. You can see the top there, sort of like a yellowy brown. The lighting's pretty weird right now because there's a storm coming in. But I was really excited to find those. I also got a good lot of chanterelles. A couple of them are old ones that I'm not gonna really use, but there are some nice new ones coming up. So I'm gonna basically clean those off with the back of my Openel knife. So you guys can see that I've got the boar bristles here at the end of this knife. And uh, so they allow me to take away the dirt from the mushrooms, which is pretty cool. So basically what I do is I get a lot of the dirt off of them. And you can also brush the top of the cap as well. A lot of people don't recommend uh, putting, soaking them in water or rinsing them in water because they tend to absorb the water and don't become as flavorful. So basically just brushing them off and then I'm gonna store them for now in my little cooler in a paper bag. So to keep them refrigerated to avoid getting, you know, slimy or getting bacteria growth on them. So I'll put them in a little paper bag so they can breathe and put them back in the cooler. Out foraging for chanterelles, I came across these guys and they are not chanterelles very obvious but I just wanted to show you um, these ones actually have real gills so you can see if I go like that they kind of um, are very thin and papery and I actually cut the stem on one of these and it's hollow inside so you can see from the outside um, you might think that it would be a chanterelle you know it's got kind of a little wavy cap maybe it hasn't quite matured yet but most certainly it is not Again, if you look at the gills here, they're not ridges, they are true gills. So they're very papery, they don't really fork. This one's kind of weird. It's the same mushroom, I think. It's just got a little bit of waviness to the gills. You know, the color, it's bright yellow, kind of slimy, and a hollow stem there. So these are not chanterelles. So I just want to take you inside. I've just, uh, set up a little while ago, a little method here to do spore prints. I've got some mushrooms under these little red cups here doing some spore prints. So basically leaving them for several hours to overnight. So when we lift up the cups, we'll see the color of the spores produced by the different mushrooms. So some I just set up, so we won't check those. But uh, here is the bolete that we found yesterday. So I'm gonna lift this up. Oh, cool. So you take a look there 
and you can actually see it has sort of an olivey brown spore print. This yellow was actually from the cap of the mushroom. It got a little bit wet, so it just transferred that, but the spore print is actually like this kind of greeny brown color. So that's very helpful in the identification process. So as you can see, it's sort of stuck to this paper towel here, and it's good to use a white paper towel because you can actually see any slight differences in color. Earlier I did some, I set them up on uh, some tin foil here, which may be very difficult to determine if it's something's cream or buff or like a pale yellow. Sometimes it's difficult to determine, but you can see here with the hedgehog mushroom, if I lift this up, oh, a little peanut. <laughs> I don't know if you can appreciate that. I see that little spore print there. It's like you can see the little itty bitty, you can see the exact imprint there of the tiny little teeth on the underside of the cap there. So it appears to be white. Again, I might repeat this actually on a white paper towel just to be absolutely sure, but you can kind of see it all along here. And it matches up with the little teeth like lamellae that it has. Put that back. I think I'll put that on some paper towel. Let's see, we've got another one that's activated here. This one I just started. Oh yeah, this is cool. This is another one of these little yellow mushrooms I found out that I'm still working on identifying. And uh, that's an older spore print that I did. It happens really quick with this mushroom. I literally just adjusted this a few minutes ago and you can already see the white spores kind of coming along here. And you can see the beautiful pattern that the spore print made there on the aluminum foil. So I'm gonna stick this back down here again. I'll probably put that as well on some tissue paper. Oh yeah, I've got some other mushrooms under there. So very cool. That's how you do some spore prints. I would highly recommend um, using white paper or even black paper for some of the uh, really white spore prints to get some really cool patterns there. But this is really cool. This is awesome. Uh, that bolete had a very unique color to the spore print there. So very interesting for its identification. So I brought home uh, the, some mushrooms to have a special meal at home and uh, I got some more of the hedgehog mushrooms that I showed you guys earlier. So I'm just going to prepare them and not to you know mess around with their flavor too much. I'd basically want to make them with a bit of butter and salt and uh, oh, they're going to taste fantastic. So to prepare them, especially with the hedgehog mushroom, you want to be really careful because these little tiny teeth that you see here, um, they tend to come off really easily. I mean, if I just show you, they're extremely brittle. They tend to be a very brittle mushroom. So you want to be really careful um, when preparing them. So, you know, I've got my little brush here. So if there's any dirt or whatnot, uh, you know, on the stem, you can kind of brush it off. Same with on the cap as well. Some of these are a little bit riddled with uh, slugs that have had at them, but uh, whatever. I'm, uh, I'll am i eat a grade D mushroom. It's okay. So you just want to kind of brush them off. If you want to just use a quick little splash of water, it's not totally going to wreck them, but I uh, just wouldn't soak them too long. Um, so you just kind of clean them up, give them a little brush, and we'll, uh, we'll chop them up. And uh, I'll just sort of clean them like that. And uh, we'll just give them a little clean up here, and we're going to put them in the frying pan. All right, so I'm just gonna just gently sort of slice them up here. And you can see there how they're little, they're called a tooth fungus for a good reason. There's these little itty bitty teeth like structures right here. So very cool. Makes them really distinctive in the woods when you're foraging for them. One thing I should point out is these things don't really freeze very well or dehydrate well, except if you do basically, you know, pan fry them a bit, saute them just till about, just till they're about done. And then what we'll do is uh, you want to freeze them after that. So that's what I've heard. I've, I just want to eat them right away. So we're going to eat them all today. So the rest of the meal tonight, I'm making a stuffed zucchini and I'm going to have some mushrooms on the side. So this should be great. All right, so they're all chopped up there. That's actually a really a good sized portion. Now they're mostly water, obviously, so they're probably gonna shrink down somewhat. If you find the odd insect, just pick it out. Extra protein, right? So yeah, no, these are actually pretty good specimens. The caps are a little bit chewed up just because of the bugs, but uh, it's no big deal. Actually, the slugs, rather. They tend to be pretty bug resistant, but uh, the slugs where we are had a feast, so. 
All right, next up, let's get them in the frying pan. All right, so I'm just gonna get some butter in this pan here and we're going to heat it up and then we'll pop the mushrooms in. Now the butter's melted, I'm just gonna add in the hedgehog mushroom or hide number panda. So you can see the little teeth come off really easily. So I'm gonna be a little gentle with these guys. Just pop those in there. It's amazing how far a few little mushrooms will go. These mushrooms sort of smell a little bit like chanterelles and they are related. Um, so they have a very, very good taste. All right, so just remove the cover and it looks like they're done. So it does not look good. They're very hearty, sort of thick, chewy mushroom and they have a lot of flavor. So they're all done. Let's get the rest of the meal ready. Well, here's my supper. It is a stuffed zucchini from my friends Tynan and Lado. Thank you very much. Really huge zucchini, look at that, eh? It's like the entire dinner plate. I've got it stuffed with Spanish rice and beef with ginger and uh, some olives on top and cheese. And there are my hedgehog mushrooms, all golden brown and fried up. So I'm just gonna try a little piece of this hedgehog mushroom. Oh my gosh. Mm. That is amazing. You can't beat wild foraged mushrooms. Such a strong, flavorful, mushroomy taste. Really beats those white button mushrooms at the store any day. Well guys, thank you so much for watching today's adventures and I hope you enjoyed the foraging. Please always be responsible with your foraging and be 100% sure of what you're foraging for and making sure you're identifying them properly before you put something in your mouth. It's always a good idea to, um, you know, when you properly identified a mushroom, if you haven't eaten it before, to try a very small portion of it and wait 24 hours just to make sure you're not going to have any kind of reaction to it, even if it's just an allergy. Um, and uh, then once you feel that it should be fine, then uh, consume it in regular portions. All right. Have a great week as always, guys. Take care.